Good evening, folks. And today, we're going to kind of talk about... This is going to be like a two-parter. This is going to kind of lead into, like, the Civil War, as well as other famous quotes from others. This is going to be kind of like an add-on, not only the Civil War, but quotes from others. Okay. Well, this is John Brown. John Brown's history of when he was in charge. Well, John Brown was... Let's talk about the background of John Brown before we get into John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry. What was still known as Virginia, but now it's West Virginia, before it was split in half in the middle of the war. Well, first off, obviously we all know about the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Totally objected to it. John Brown objected to that. He already had like numerous children over the years. Born in 1800, he was already 55. Had to, then a year later in 1856, first off, he saw the way slavery was when he was just 12 years old. Actually, younger than that. I can't remember what how old he was. I didn't quite catch that part. But John Brown saw how certain individuals were when he was so young. Slaves were treated terribly when he saw them. So, what occurred was absolutely outrageous. When he got older, he opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Act. He never really voted for either party. He never really took a side. But he was so anti-slavery. He was pretty much like what the Union was. Anti-slavery. But he went, this was before the Civil War even began in 1859 when this raid took place. So, before we get into that, in 1855, he opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which pretty much would cause people in Kansas or other free territories that aren't states to have, to literally have that power to be slay. Slave owners to adopt slaves or not have slaves. So he was all against that. And he was literally furious when the Kansas Nebraska Act passed. So one year later, in 1856, he had a plan. He was going to free slaves. That's where Canada comes into play. Remember how I told you about how Canada, how the United, how Benedict Arnold and company had a plan to make Canada a state when they invaded Canada, but it was thrown back because of the manpower they didn't have. Well, this is here maybe would be a good reason why, because they would take every single one of their troops and free slaves into Canada, and they would be free people, fugitives. The Confederacy, and we'll get into that in a little moment here. 1856, five pro-slave owners, five pro-slavery people were found out by John Brown's children at Potawatomi Tommy Creek. Potawatomi Creek, excuse me. I'm not real good with some pronunciations of some words, so I apologize for that. Potawatomi Creek. And he got a gang together. And went over there to that Powhatomie Creek in Kansas area and massacred them. Killed all five of them. Nothing left on that property. Took, they had one slave there and they took that slave and sent that slave to Canada. As a free person. Now lives freely. Next person. Then one year later, 1857... 
a provi- he wrote a provisional constitution that would give him power to be Virginia, the governor of Virginia. Easily could have done it. Now, we're going to talk about states that seceded from the Union. Literally every state that seceded from the Union tomorrow. About how this could have rewritten the history. And that here, Kessel could have rewritten the history. But 1858, a convention for abolitionists in Canada. John Brown was also an abolitionist. Abolitionist is all about terminating slavery. Which is technically what Republicans were back in the day. And the Democrats were all pro-slavery. And another abolitionist, but they were not extremists like that. This is before the Civil War even took place, though. So here we go. In 1858, a convention for abolitionists in Canada was held. Same year, just a little later... He went back to America, had a little conversation, onto a farm just down the road, had took care, took some slaves away, and killed one slave owner, and freed eleven slaves, sent them to Canada. Technically twelve, because another one was born while en route. So he freed twelve slaves. So. Then in 1859, on the way to Harper's Ferry, the most crucial mistake he made, because back in the day they had like a little wire, they had the little tapping, a tap machine that I can't remember what they call those, but they bring in through wire tapping through machines that you grab a hold here. And they sent, he had 22 guys. Him and 21 other guys were there. 22 all together. And it all came down to one thing. He killed one civilian on the train if he would have done one simple thing. Shot and literally killed, literally. He had an army together. But these 22, he literally had an army. This was John Brown's plan. John Brown's plan was simple. Drive from Harper's Ferry all the way down through the southern states, go to all the southern states' plantations, free the slaves, arm the slaves from military depots, arm those slaves, and then they just go all the way through and literally just... and literally destroy literally everything of what the South was meant for. Almost like his own personal civil war. Now, what do you call him? Is he a hero or is he a villain? Now, with that being said, opposing him was 88 Marines, U.S. Marines, and Virginia and Maryland militia, and some militia troops. Now, how did all this go down? It was an all-out shootout between civilians and them. Six civilians killed, nine wounded. One was killed. The engineer was on the. One engineer was killed on the train. All he had to do was, but he let the engineer go. He let the train go. If you would have taken everything off the train, and pretty much all doused the train up, and just pretty much all burn the train to the ground, taken everybody off the train, and done that right. Oh my gosh, he would have had it made. But he sent, but he let the train go, so they wiretapped over to Washington and said, Our train's been robbed. We need more reinforcements. So, obviously, guess who was in charge? Colonel Robert E. Lee. Yes, the same Robert E. Lee that was soon to be General Robert E. Lee when Virginia, and I say again, Virginia. When Virginia seceded from the Union, the all war at war was already happening. But he wasn't quite says he wasn't quite taking a command yet. But he said this one in particular line. 
He said, I can't fight my fellow, kill my fellow Virginians. I will not kill my fellow Virginians. And that's why he went with the Confederates. And sure enough, it happened. He went with them. The outcome of that, of the whole raid, one ring dead and wounded. One Marine was killed and the other one was wounded. And now, for the 22 true, for the 22 of overall, 12 killed, 6 were captured, later all hung, 1 died in jail, and 4 escaped. So technically, at Harper's Ferry, it all failed. So, Now the question is this. What would he be to you? This is the question you got to ask yourself. And comment down below what you think. Is John Brown a hero? Or is he an enemy? Because he ended up being killed. They ended up hanging him at the end. He was one of the six that got captured. He's not the one that died in jail, though. He's one of the six that got captured. He ended up getting hanged at the end. He's one of the five that ended up getting hanged at the end. Literally the 22, but it pretty much will end the whole entire... But that's pretty much what started the whole entire war. Was that right there. That pretty much will what sent it over the edge. And... He ended up dying, and two of the others ended up dying. One died in March of 1860, and the other one died just four days prior to... This is after Abraham Lincoln was elected president. Just four days prior to December 20th, 1860. What happened on 1860? South Carolina seceded from the Union. The other one was executed on 18 on December 16th, 1860. Just four days prior to South Carolina seceding from the Union. Just proves how it all happened. John Brown was an abolitionist. But he had, just like, but he could have easily been governor. Now, if he would have been governor, if he would have actually ran for office at, in Virginia, in one office, do you think the outcome of the war would have been a little different? Do you think Virginia ever would have seceded from the Union? Because most of the time, this is how it normally works. When literally everyone votes overall, it goes to the governor's desk. And if the governor's pro-slavery or not, obviously in this case they were, then, hey, we're no longer a state. We seceded from the Union. And he marks it, writes it down, we're no longer a state. Now, this case, since he's against slavery, all he has to do is say, no, I'm against slavery. We're not seceding from the Union. And that's that. And that's all he had to do. It was just write that down, say, we're not seceding from the Union. And then, with all the battles that Robert E. Lee fought in, like Fredericksburg that he won in Fredericksburg, he never would have fought in Fredericksburg as a Confederate general. He would have been a Union general. The whole entire war would have changed in a heartbeat if Virginia never seceded from the Union. And that is a fact. If John Brown actually ran, but abolitionists, probably, but he probably never would have won Virginia. But, 
Now, you gotta think. How do you win? You gotta play the game somehow. But, with that being said, hit the like button, subscribe, like, hit the bell for notifications. With that being said, I got things I gotta do. I'm gonna do a little more research. And I'm out of here. Peace.